<laughs> it was really interesting to go back and watch it. Uh, and and to there were episodes, you know, remember, it was just on one night and then you mm -hmm. didn't know what night that might be or what time that might be sometimes. It, it just went all over the place. So there were episodes I never saw and I was like entranced with it. It was even better than I remembered it to be. I think that's like, that's one of the things about, I mean, it's been said to death how progressive it was, how well made yeah. and about the whole flying under the radar thing because you had your next gen was coming to a close. Then there was the new network and everything. So, so you kind of got away with so much that maybe other shows wouldn't, which we're obviously delighted for. But then you go back and it's such a cohesive story. Yeah. Um, and I, I know we, we we spoke before about how you know that you, you you see you know you can't go near a convention and it seems like the next gen crew never did a day of work in their life, um, and you know kind of directors quitting over the behavior of the ad. and then for a while it looked as if you know on Deep Space Nine it was nine o'clock check in how are you getting on okay do your day and then five o'clock go home and that was the end of it and I know there is a degree of truth to that. But it looks like in the last couple of years, the stories of, you know, these people did like each other uh, has started to come out. And how has that been for you being able to talk about the fun times? Well, um, I, I, it's it, that's a, a very complicated what you bring up. And I think part of the reason why they were so carefree and happy on their set was that they visited a planet. It was the week. It was the the vibration of the week and they left we continued this story that was heavy it was heavy and it was about us and what we're going through in our lives we didn't jet off afterwards mm -hmm. so uh i think that you know it it's a natural thing for that to uh penetrate the set and the feeling and the seriousness of what we were doing. If you have a scene where you're, you know, uh, uh, told that your best friends are dead, it's not, you're not gonna, um, uh, at least me, I'm not gonna come from, hey, yeah, let's go. And okay, there, cause I don't, this was always my thought. Those camera people, those grips, the electricians, they have families they want to go home to. And already it's probably going to be midnight or one or two in the morning. I don't want to mess around and make it worse for them. I was always aware of that. And so the seriousness, I think, was partly that. Partly our number one, Avery Brooks, uh, ran the set with a, 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 a focus and a seriousness. And you always get what number one is doing and it kind of filters down i i i think any anyone who's seen an interview with avery or had the chance to meet avery i think will straight away go yep i know exactly what you're talking about uh i i remember this is going back about 10 or so years william shatner did that documentary series the captains and yes. he spends an episode with avery and i went oh i get what obviously because this is said in your documentary so i was like Oh, I get, oh, he is a jazz musician. He is absolutely yeah. like, a, Avery is Avery. There is no imitators. There is no anything. He is a jazz musician. He comes in the room. I march into his room. And it's deep. He's going to ask questions. Critical thinking is important to him. So it puts us all in that. But I will say, did we, did I love this cast? Yes. Was it an honor to work? But then we have this weird thing of conventions and and further connection where we're going to Europe. You know, Renee and I would go to Europe with my husband and his wife and plan outings and and the tightness and the shared history made it a found family. And, you know, that having the history of the conventions and the experience of the seven years, it to me, I always said it was a community, but really um, I would call the people on the show a found family that, you know, we don't always have to get together for Thanksgiving, but, you know, we are always there for each other, for sure.
I think as well, out of all of that, and, and I'm very much including the shows that are currently on the air, uh, there's never been such an expansive cast. I mean, you had your, 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 your main, when I say your names in the opening credits cast who are there week to week, but I mean, such an extended cast as well. That you forget that they weren't regular characters. It seems that they were. I mean, everyone, everyone. Some of the best, most important women were uh, were guest stars. Yep. Chase Masterson, you know? I mean, Penny, uh, uh, Louise Fletcher, all mm -hmm. of them, huge. And Rosalind Chow was a guest star. That was her own choice. Uh, because they wanted her to be a regular character. But um, yeah, you forget. That's actually, I didn't know. I I, I thought you know, we, we got Keiko as the stories came up. I, I hadn't realized that was a, a request by Rosin herself. Yes, it was. That's like, but as you say, it's kind of, you know, there's, there's, there's a mean drinking game, which is, all right, take a shot for every named character on a show. You'd be absolutely blotto by the end of Deep Space Nine. Absolutely. That's actually a good game because you would be. It, it, it is as well because you just just the, the, the fear that the players would go into it's like, oh no, oh no. We, we've all done the give us the sequel, give us the movie, give us whatever. And I'm not going to stop asking for that, heads up. Um, but we're being gifted these things. For example, Lower Decks. Yeah. Uh, which, was, which was fantastic. Um, oh and my again, God. Oh. Keep circling the pylons. That's one of my, that makes me laugh just as much in Galaxy Quest when he says, wait a minute, I don't have a name. I'm going to be killed. <laughs> 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 Who is that wonderful character? I can't think of his name, but. I'm going to absolutely show myself. I have, I have seen guys. Who, it's been a while. Uh, oh, I'm just I going know. to call him I'm Ensign too. Ricky. Yeah. But it was so, I remember watching it I don't know if Deep Space Nine was still on or just recently over, but I fell out of my chair laughing. It was so true because I used to go on set and, you know, okay, so this, we're under attack. We know a pipe is going to come down and there's going to be steam coming out of it. That's for sure. And it's all regular characters. And then who are you? I've never met you before. Oh, you die. <laughs> Yeah, You're again, the sacrifice. Be, that's just to be in that headspace of like, oh great, I'm on Star Trek. I'm on an away mission. This will be my <laughs> only appearance in Star Trek, apparently. Um, oh, uh, you know, dream come true with a hint of sadness. Mm -hmm. um, now, obviously, you, you, you mentioned a lot about like DS9 in particular has an incredible core female cast as well. Obviously, Star Trek generally has been quite good for that. Looking at you, Voyager. Um, and we spoke last time, and I'd like to ask you again about the novel that you've been working on for... Well, yeah. but it's not a novel. It is... Not a novel, okay. Absolute true. It's... Uh, I interviewed so many, all the women that would allow me to. Um, uh, it was slightly difficult because it was during the pandemic and we needed mm. to stay on schedule, so I couldn't get on sets and get a whole bunch of people. Um, but I did a lot of Zoom interviews. Women were incredibly generous. And I don't know how many uh, audience members, because I wanted to know what it meant. Why did they watch a particular woman? Why did that particular character appeal to you? What did you take away from it? And uh, it, so many interviews you can't imagine. The book started out it was going to be one thing it turned into something entirely different it really became much more instead of the characters about the cultural influence why we need characters like this what the women were going through you know in the 60s as they were you know showing this incredible future for women uh, or at least a better future than was going on at the time don't forget, women were not allowed to be astronauts. They were pushed out of the program. Um, the, they were going through the realities of Hollywood and the cultural ideas of women and maneuvering where they could uh, and to try to get a, a, a seat at the table. And women still do that. 
but it looks at the book looks at the progression of that for the actors and the influence they had for the audience members and it was it is enormous it was very emotional and not just women but what men took away from it too the fact that uh Dr Crusher was single and a, a single mother met a lot to little boys who could go hey you know what that's okay my mother i don't have a father here but dr crusher seems to manage just fine and it and look at the kid he's brilliant i i'm not in such a bad position it normalized so many things for people and also gave them there was an army chaplain sorry i'm going on about this but please do no there was a young and she probably go what young but yes she's a young army chaplain who has such a hard job you know when you think of what they do going out on the battlefield and uh, uh keeping people spiritually okay while they are suffering and maybe dying it's unbelievable to me and she first of all loved Dr. Crusher just took so much from that character growing up watching it as a little girl but she told me what Star Trek taught her and what she carries onto those battlefields and the difficult moments that she encounters that Star Trek teaches these three things are non-negotiable for humans hope courage and the understanding that none of us are ever alone and uh that's a tv show it's pretty remarkable it is i think star trek often i think gets quite rightly lauded for how it dealt with these are monumental themes these are huge these are enormous things that perhaps if it was Pitch today, a studio might be like, I'm not touching that. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Um, yeah. And this I, was I week so. to week. Oh, huh. uh, well, but, you know, look at Discovery. Look at uh, Strange New Worlds. They approach those things, but don't forget, it's just a little bit safer because they're in space. And the writing is such that they can walk a line. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I think that certainly helps um but i'll say the thing i really walked away from after talking to so many people about how passionate they are how star trek has been a guiding star for them i go what the hell you th you've got a five year six seven eight whatever they were young child there's no one around them that understands them they go, I need to survive somehow. And they find a TV show that speaks to them. And they go, I'm going to do that. That seems to be a way to grow myself up without much help. I find that to be such a hopeful sign for the human spirit. Uh, it blows me away. Sometimes I think when 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 people talk about DS9 as a whole, you, I, like I just said, it's dark Star Trek and everything. It's so funny in so many parts. So we just did a rewatch there for for a video of Take Me Out to the Hollow Suite, and there are so many parts of that episode. I'm thinking Renee in his office practicing to be an umpire. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I'm thinking you know, specifically of your, your yourself and that slide tackle and you know you're out by the way I thought oh my god she's about to pull a phaser on her this is this is about this 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 baseball game is about to descend into and it's so funny in parts and that's a hard balance yes it is it really is and and not tip over into something that it that takes us out that that trivializes wait what's that cool t-shirt you're wearing what is that oh my god <laughs> I, <love that. laughs> I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll fire you a link to the uh to the artist afterwards but i just saw this and went yes 
absolutely, oh, yeah. I must have this. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's really wonderful. But yeah, that uh, the that episode, you know, that was hell for me because I have no hand-eye coordination whatsoever, not at all. I remember there was a scene where we're going on an away mission and we're in, you know, a Star Trek formation kind of thing. And Avery, for some reason, has some kind of bag and, you know, just improvising. He threw the bag at me and uh, my arms just stayed by my side and it hit me in the face. He was horrified. It was like, how do you not have the natural inclination to grab the bag? But I don't. So they hired a baseball player to teach mm. me how to throw and how to hit and how to catch. Okay. It was fun. And I still have a pretty mean arm because of I, it. I, I'm, I, I meant to say I have something sitting here. Do you still have one of those? Oh, yes. Excellent. Oh, yes. Excellent. Cool. And at I a convention at some box. point, we'll get a picture together. Yep. Uh, um, and I, ha I have to say as well, so I, I'm, I'm smiling saying this, but considering lack of hand-eye coordination, you're a bloody good actor because I really thought you could shoot anyone from 50 miles away. I mean, you know, and a lot of that, a lot of the hand-to-hand, -hand, I mean, that must have been tiring, if nothing else. Specifically, I'm thinking of um, Way of the Warrior and battling with the Klingons on uh, on Ops. I mean, like, you know, kind of like anyone else gets stabbed, they're dead. You get stabbed, ah, I'll walk it off. Well, that I thought a lot about that moment because in the adren the truth is in the adrenaline of a moment it may hit a nerve and take you down but it, you don't feel it you're still going you are in the battle and i thought she would be she would be so committed it's like yep uh something happened to my body but i'm still fighting and uh that kind of truthfulness was really interesting to me to portray i heard something from a New York policeman this in the 70s, and I wonder if it's true that uh, when they actually started to wound people, when they wounded people in a gunfight after TV showed what happened, which would be you just drop or you start screaming, mm. people started to copy what they saw on TV when they got hit rather than what the body actually does. Do, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, it, it's like they in your mind, copying, you, you're told you should feel, yeah. Yes, so they started copying what they saw on TV instead of TV actually doing the truth of what happens. You mean TV's not telling the truth? What? <laughs> uh, but no, I, I, I that's, that's really interesting because yeah, I suppose like you, you know, I, I have an idea of what being wounded, what the reaction is and everything. I can say, you know, touch wood, I have never been shot. Hopefully I never will be. Um, but, you know, and yes, you would be like, ah, or, you know, kind of whatever. This reminds right. me, um, where I, I, Lord of the Rings, uh, Return of the King, uh, Christopher Lee on set with Peter Jackson. And, you know, there's a scene where a person is stabbed in the back from behind. And the direction says, now he must goes, ah, and Christopher Lee in his very Christopher Lee way goes, excuse me, Peter. Do you know what it sounds like when a man is stabbed from behind? And Peter Jackson said, of course not. He goes, well, I do. And that's not the noise that they would make. See? And I think there's a human thing that makes uh, uh, it when when something is truthful like that, it hits you in a different way. And I I've had a lot of people say the fact that I go down and come back up after being stabbed really affected them. But I think truthfulness does that to us. We recognize it. It's like uh, 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 oh, one of my favorite actors, and I can't think of his name, from Don't Look Now, uh, his death scene. Hmm? Don Don Donald Sutherland. Love Donald that. Sutherland's death scene was so truthful. It was horrible and upsetting and emotional and beautiful um, because there's truth to it. Nana, you've been a star. Thank you so much again. Um, do we have a, a sort of a ballpark on when we can hope for the book? I, I've been told June. I know publishing companies are famous for pushing. We've pushed a lot already. So we'll see, but I've, I've heard June. 
but I probably know there are people who probably know better than me <laughs> in the audience. They'll be like, no, 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 no. Let me tell you what the contract says. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I encourage those people to go for it and let us know. But no, that is brilliant. So I can't wait to read it. Um, thank and, you. and thank you for doing it because there's going to be so many things that come out of this that they're going to open people's eyes and I am really excited. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Anytime. Uh, Nana Visitor, it's wonderful to say this. Thank you for coming on our podcast and we really appreciate it. My pleasure, always. Thank you so much for watching this abbreviated version of this podcast. Now, if you go to our audio platforms, you will get the full version of this podcast with this guest. So we really, really appreciate you subscribing to that. And you're just awesome and wonderful. Thank you so much.